Uh, well, my name is Aina Salvik. Uh, come from Norway, where I uh, and and for the last 20 years, I've sort of dedicated myself to to uh, to making new new music and uh, yeah, new music with using uh, old tools, thoughts, and and uh, ideas, basically, basically taking some something very old and making something new with it it's not about um, necessarily being authentic uh, it's more about taking stuff from the past that is just as relevant today as they were maybe thousand two thousand years ago and, and uh, uh, yeah makes a, make something new uh, that is still interesting for the contemporary uh, uh, listener and it's human. Metal music. No, Wodruna has very little to do with metal uh, in a sense, although um, a lot of people who like metal like Wodruna um, and I think there are several reasons for that. One of the things are of course the thematics which uh, I think many people in metal both like and, and also relate to in, in a sense but also the soundscapes um, I think ma metal music can be very visual um, and, uh, and and very melodic uh, and and uh, the music of Valruna is also very melodic and, and has these big open soundscapes that I think many many metal people uh, enjoy and, uh, and maybe you can perhaps draw some 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 links to to early black metal where where you have these monotonous things just going on and on and and where atmosphere is more important than technique and so on I, I guess you can see a similarity there uh, but apart from that I would say that Valdruna has has nothing to do with metal and what is the final objective of your your band you try to uh, interpret uh, some kind of ancestral music? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it, it is about taking um, taking some of the, for instance, the old myths uh, and also the old instruments and, and try and interpret them on their own premises uh, rather than forcing them into to a, another shape or, or a, another specific context. It's more about yeah, I, that's what I wanted to do, and I was missing. There was nobody doing it, like interpreting these old Norse myths and, and traditions on their own premises, using relevant sound, relevant instruments, relevant language, and so on. And, and um, so that was the sort of con concept and, and the creational concept of, for instance, the, the trilogy that I've been doing now the three albums is basically uh, making music to to the to the proto Scandinavian set of runes which each have a symbolic value and there again it's about interpreting them on their own premises that means use instruments or sounds that sort of enhance the contents um, it can be uh, recording in specific uh, settings or, or places, even dates that somehow are, are give meaning or enhance the quality of each of the rooms. In forest, so, for example. Forest, standing in the middle of a river, uh, playing on ice, stones, fire, trees. Uh, so, so it's been a very, it's been a very. Um, It's been a very time-demanding uh, process, and it's been, like the first album. It took me seven years to make it, to sort of find the balance of things, and, and uh, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, and you built your own uh, instruments. Yeah, especially in the in in the beginning, I had to because when I started researching and doing all of this, you, it wasn't like now because the last maybe five six years, the the interest for for both the instruments and the old historical reenactment thing it's just exploded worldwide so now it's much more easy much more people doing it but when I started 
there were maybe a handful of people who knew about these <laughs> instruments and, and a few people who still made them uh, and so I basically had to either get somebody to build it for me or build it myself and I did both. Um, um What is your documentation for work and for learn about the past? Well, the sources of uh, the sources of, of of ancient Norse culture is very scattered and in bits and pieces. Uh, of course, we have um, we have uh, written sources. We have sources that you find archaeological sources. And uh, I have to say, and, and also we have traditions that sort of survived, that is basically a living tradition, but we know it's very ancient. Um, so it's a, it's, I guess it's a combination of that. And, and my approach, I guess, to, to many of these things are both of an um, um, academic um, nature and, and also uh, a practical approach to it. Uh, because I'm, I am a, what you, somewhat of a history nerd and, and do a lot of studies and, and um, so I start out there to, to, to find out how we know, what we think we know about these things and then it's about trying out because when you start applying uh, any hypothesis to, to, to practical uh, execution then you find out whether or not it works or not. So uh, I think the combination is, is quite good. So even though I, I say always that it's not necessarily important for me to be authentic, a lot of the things I do is based on authentic uh, stuff. I, I have already realized um, uh, some video about uh, uh, North mythology and I have met a lot of people who studies uh, in um, history mm. and uh, some of them um, told me that in fact uh, Norse mythology doesn't exist because uh, all the text we, we got is text uh, was writing by uh, Christian people uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the faceless uh, uh, of Norse mythology is uh, 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 is not uh, unified in a Nordic country so, uh, can you? What is your opinion about that? Uh, well, I think that it's a bit too simple to put it like that. Uh, but of course, uh, I also think that uh, the idea or, or the way many people view Norse mythology today, with this sort of uh, pantheon of Norse gods, that's not correct. Uh, there were never. Uh, I, I don't believe there was any. Uh, but you, then, then you have to do, like I said before, it's about finding out how we know what we think we know about these things. Uh, like um, finding out what, um, uh, how this have been interpreted throughout the times, both when it was written in, in the 1200s, most of these things, but also how they were interpreted in later days, and, and you see how it changes. You, you of course, you, you choose, um, uh, you choose uh, a truth in in a sense. But but saying that there is no Norse mythology, that's that's nonsense, yeah. uh, because <laughs> because uh, you have to. Uh, you, in many cases, you can um, you can quite easily. Uh, um, uh, separate uh, what, what is obviously pagan from, from a pre-Christian era and you have to remember that any of these poems they were th this is an oral tradition they were never meant to be read so this is something that survived uh, in, 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 uh, in an oral tradition and, uh, and uh, many of these poems we are able to date, uh, actually, um, at least roughly date. So, um, so I, do, I, don't under, uh, I, I definitely don't agree with that, uh, that way of putting it, but I understand what the person 
who says memes. It basically means that the way many people sort of force uh, the Norse mythology into this Greek pantheon thought, or even a Christian way of viewing gods and, and, and humans, which is definitely not how it was in a living tradition, is definitely not correct. So um, yeah, I, I agree on that, but saying uh, Norse mythology or, or the myths didn't exist, that's I don't even understand what that means. No, no, I think <laughs> it's a provocation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, two questions again. Um, why is this needed to find uh, its roots and to talk about the ancestors uh, in metal music in general and in your music? Why? Yeah. Or, um, why well, I, I, uh, I don't think your roots are important just because they are your roots. Uh, it needs to carry relevance still. There are many things from the past which are not relevant anymore uh, for, for several, several reasons. But, um, but there are, on the other hand, there are many things that is definitely worth remembering, especially in this time and age where we have sort of separated our species from nature in many ways. Uh, and I, I, I think many people feel that uh, need to some sort of connectiveness to, to nature and, and to each other and to something bigger than yourself, whether or not it's a spiritual thing or a philosophical thing or just being part of nature. That's, that's not important, but I, I think that is why a lot of people are searching for these things. And um, so, so I would say my music is, is, is about that. It's about um, the thought that a, a tree without roots will fall uh, and, and that, um, yeah, it's very much about nature. It's uh, universal themes, even though I put my, my music in, and my words in this sort of Norse package, rapping, uh, I think the stuff I'm singing about, or we are singing about, is, is universal and, and can be definitely relevant to, to anyone, anywhere, uh, uh, here and now. And after this uh, trilogy, what are your plans? No, it's finished now. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, uh, no I, I, in many ways I, I feel this is just the beginning. There are, you know, when... Uh, yeah, there are so many things I want to do with with Valruna and, and so I'm very inspired to, to continue uh, doing this. But I cannot be specific yet. <laughs> I, I would have to kill you after. <laughs>